Returning to China once again, he expressed his deep admiration for China's achievements. He is eager to emulate China's successful balance between development and environmental conservation. He expressed gratitude to China for considering Vanuatu both a friend and a brother. He is looking forward to cementing a stronger partnership and achieving mutual development between the two nations. Charles Salwai, Prime Minister of Vanuatu, sat down for an exclusive interview with Leaders Talk. Hello and welcome to Leaders Talk, where we meet leaders, thinkers and trailblazers on Zhou Yun. Our guest today is Vanuatu's Prime Minister Charlotte Salve. Five years after his last visit to China, how does he perceive China's modernization? With a first-hand look at China's green development, what collaboration does he foresee between Pacific Island countries and China on climate issues? Having toured Guangdong, Shanghai and Beijing, what insights has he gained from all these dynamic cities? Join us as we delve into all these questions in our conversation with Prime Minister Salve. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you for joining us today. Well, it looks like you had a very busy and extensive uh, schedule in the past days, traveling to Guangdong, Shanghai, and here in Beijing, visiting those high-tech companies, as well as uh, taking the high-speed train, and even enjoyed a uh, performance of traditional uh, Canton opera, and I even try a little bit. This is you and your wife trying the customs of the, uh, the, the Cantonese uh, opera. And also, I heard you're a big fan of Chinese food. And this is uh, right when you were cutting the, uh, the roast uh, suckling pig, and you love uh, the Peking duck. So first of all, at the start of our conversation, could you share with us your overall impressions and feelings about the trip so far? Well, many had to say Peking duck because um, we had it here on our railroad, so it was yeah. very tasty. And I understand that the uh, uh, Chinese ambassador in Vanuatu mm -hmm. brought us to one of uh, the traditional restaurants. Yes. Small, but uh, beautiful. Uh -huh. Well, it's uh, going to be my second uh, official visit to China. I'm always impressed to see uh, big changes, and, but especially innovations made by uh, China, and especially the cities, because uh, a big impression is to see how uh, China continue to uh, maintain and keep uh, its uh, culture, mm -hmm. because I think it's a basis of uh, everything to know where we come from and uh, to understand where we are today. And uh, I think uh, China is doing a lot to maintaining its culture, but uh, at the same time, uh, doing in innovating into transformation of uh, its cultures uh, today. And uh, it comes from a long way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, some hardship the government, but also the people of uh, uh, China. So I'm impressed to see uh, what it is done. Yeah. Especially how um, China associates uh, uh, infrastructure development with uh, nature. Yes. That's meant to keep, uh, to continue to keep the environment. Mm -hmm. It's a fault as well to the climate change by maintaining uh, ecosystem in place. Right. So I think it's uh, something that uh, for a small country like Vanuatu, it's, it's uh, important to learn. So we are here. I mean, I'm here with uh, my delegation to, to learn. Vanuatu has graduated from uh, the world's least developed countries in 2020. And now, Mr. Prime Minister, what are some of the priorities that are critical to you in propelling the country towards growth and uh, resilience? It was uh, a challenging time when we, we decided to uh, move the country out of uh, least developed country to a developed country. And uh, 
uh, in the beginning we didn't really agree because uh, according to us we there's a few things that uh, we need to be addressed uh, firstly in uh, social sector education and health mm -hmm. to make sure that our people have access to not only adequate but uh, good quality education mm -hmm. in health to have access to good health but also infrastructure utilities infrastructure roads power uh, telecommunication water and uh, so on we are very thankful to china but uh, he assists us in building uh, the wharf and uh, roads in islands but also is also supporting us in during a time of a disaster provide reliefs to uh, some of our schools and but also health and uh, assistance to the community with the other partners as well development partners as well are doing the same during time of uh, need Vanuatu located in the southwest Pacific Ocean is part of the wider Melanesian archipelago that comprises over 80 islands. It is known as the Pearl of the South Pacific due to its unique terrain. Featuring year-long sunshine, spectacular beaches, and active volcanoes, it seamlessly blends pristine ecosystems with modernity, attracting numerous travelers. Since establishing diplomatic relations in 1982, China and Vanuatu have enjoyed smooth bilateral relations. During Prime Minister Solway's visit to China in July 2024, both nations agreed to enhance their comprehensive strategic partnership, aiming to forge a new era of shared future between China and Vanuatu. President Xi has uh, pointed out that the bilateral relations between the two countries has become a model of mutual respect, uh, solidarity and coordination between developing countries. What's your vision in bringing this already very solid tie to even greater heights? Well, the relationship of uh, Vanuatu with China today is uh, in a, a different height mm -hmm. today. And we are very uh, happy to have this. And thankful to China to consider a small uh, country like Vanuatu as a uh, friend as our brother and we are so happy to uh, for that and but also we to have this mutual respect and uh, respect the independence of uh, each other mm -hmm. and not interfere to uh, each other's uh, affairs we are very thankful that um, china is a great nation mm -hmm. can consider small island countries like Vanuatu as a, as a friend, and, uh, but also as a brother. China, because uh, China support the independence of uh, Vanuatu mm -hmm. at the United Nations and the Committee of uh, 24. And we really appreciate and uh, we start. Because we have been colonized by England and France, and we, we are a member of uh, OIF, uh, which is Organization of the International de la Francophonie, mm -hmm. but also the Commonwealth. And uh, I remember well when uh, one of uh, our former uh, Prime Minister and uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, but also Rowing Ambassador, Barack Sope, who was uh, searching around the world to, for assistance to build our parliament. Mm -hmm. But even those who were practicing uh, their culture they didn't support that uh, China come to support us to build the parliament we have today, parliament complex. So that was the first uh, development cooperation that we had with uh, China and it was uh, great. So Mr. Prime Minister, you've met with uh, President Xi Jinping a couple of times before. So how do you see him as a leader? I see him as a great leader. China is great. We have a great population. Mm -hmm. And uh, his contribution to many international law uh, and uh, policy in relation to climate change, but also by 
finding ways to have global peace. And we really appreciate to see uh, leaders like him. How do you understand the global significance of the concept of uh, a community of shared future for mankind proposed by President Xi, as well as uh, his proposal of uh, the Global Development Initiative, the Global Security Initiative, as well as the Global Civilization Initiatives? We welcome uh, the idea. Coexistence in, of, uh, in mankind is, uh, mm -hmm. uh, coincides very well with uh, our vision and how our community and uh, Vanuatu and people. Well, some countries have uh, expressed their concerns about this closer ties between China and the uh, Pacific Island countries. What's your response to those uh, concerning voices and doubts? Well, I think uh, uh, Pacific Island countries will have a lot of uh, challenges. One of them is uh, climate change. Mm -hmm. As uh, it's a public knowledge that everyone knows uh, what is affecting uh, the Pacific Island countries in terms of sea rise, global warming, and uh, we are the victim of this in, in, in reality. So, and uh, every day it's a concern of uh, the Pacific Island country to protect the blue ocean that we have, and to continue to provide food to our people, but also remain uh, the economic uh, resources back to, to the country, each country. So the challenges we have, I think we, will, we, will, we can find uh, solutions with uh, true relationship that we have with uh, China. I think uh, uh, it is good to work and have relationship to someone or some country that is listening. And uh, I think China is listening to us. Uh, and that's why we, we are here mm -hmm. uh, to talk with him. Facing the unknown is always difficult. In a world in turmoil, it's easy to lose orientation. But when the storms come, we have to see the possibilities. Reinvent, find new opportunities. Discover a path forward. CGTN. See the difference. During his visit to China, Prime Minister Cao Wei chose Guangdong as his first stopover to reconnect with the country. There, he explored technological innovation and green development at places like the Nanshan Energy Ecology Park in Shenzhen. Due to its limited land area, Vanuatu faces significant challenges in waste disposal. At the Nanshan Energy Ecology Park, often dubbed the Waste Incineration Plant Without Walls, Salwe inspected incinerators, control rooms, turbines for steam generation, and smoke abatement plants. He engaged with staff discussing topics such as waste sorting procedures and inter-island waste management operations. Solway praised China's environmental initiatives, noting their potential for numerous countries, especially small island states. In 2022, the parliament of Vanuanu um, declared the climate emergency, reaffirming that climate change is the single greatest uh, challenge to the safety and well-being of the people. Well, this time during your visit to the Nanshan Energy Ecological Park, you have shown great interest to the waste incineration system as well as some of the other uh, state-of-art uh, equal technologies. So what's your plan to incorporate these insights gained here and enhance cooperation with China in addressing the challenges of uh, climate change as well as uh, environmental protection? It's a reality of uh, uh, we are uh, experiencing uh, the reality of what we call uh, climate change mm -hmm. by looking some part of our small islands uh, uh, I would say sinking because uh, of sea rise. Uh, many trees are in the water. And uh, it is also affecting uh, livelihood, right. especially in 
uh, agriculture. Mm -hmm. We need to add up ourselves to this uh, climate change, and it's, it's not easy. And alone, we, we don't have enough resources to address this issue of uh, climate change. We need an uh, in international community to hear us. Uh, it's not only Vanuatu, but uh, all the Pacific Island countries, because we are living in the mm -hmm. biggest ocean. Uh, even though it's uh, sometimes we call it the blue gold, but uh, we are uh, resilient. But um, in spite of uh, many severe cyclones that uh, really affect uh, our economy. Mm -hmm. For example, last year we experienced um, uh, three severe cyclones in a year, mm -hmm. and uh, of category five. But uh, Small island countries uh, were always, always considered as beautiful, but uh, were more beautiful before. But they are still beautiful. Mm -hmm. But we are changing uh, their landscape because of uh, climate change and tropical cyclones, mm -hmm. uh, tsunami and uh, flooding and etc. But uh, that's why we, right. it is very important. It's part of uh, what we call it uh, security. It is, but how do you enhance, co enhance cooperation with China on that front, on climate, tackling climate change and um, environmental protection as well? Well, one of them, we have a few things, but um, as I mentioned earlier, but, um, we saw how China is, um, because we want also to, to, to uh, have a, uh, uh, development progress in the, in the country as well, improving infrastructures, mm -hmm. access to market, access to schools, access to health for our people. Mm -hmm. But it must be done with uh, uh, respect to the environment. So I think that it's one of the experience that I learned here in China, how uh, there's a lot of uh, development, infrastructure developments, mm -hmm. but it, it is associated with uh, uh, the environment and the eco ecosystem that we have in China. So, I want to show you something, Mr. Prime Minister. This is when you were at the uh, handover ceremony of the uh, Yabanwala Malakula Road, which yeah. was built by Chinese company. And this road has been held by local people as the road of hope or yeah. the road to the future. And you were there during the ceremony and you have called it, quote unquote here, a very big development or a new level of partnership with China. So, Mr. Prime Minister, what do you think are some of the major benefits brought by this road to especially the ordinary people, such as farmers, students, and uh, individuals in need? Well, it's a great uh, change for their life because um, uh, you would see mm -hmm. the condition of the road before. Sometimes during uh, bad uh, weather, uh, they, they can go up to their village, even though by vehicle, the vehicle can cross the rivers, can cross uh, uh, some of the um, a rough uh, area. Uh, but today, only a few minutes, they can get to the main center of uh, the island, but uh, before they, they, they can. So it's a big change in the life of the people. They can easily have access. They can easily have access to schools, right. to hospitals. Many of uh, the women, sometimes they deliver on the road, mm -hmm. uh, cannot reach uh, the hospital because of the condition of, uh, of the road. Actually, Vanuatu is one of the first countries to join China's Belt and Road Initiative. And now the cooperation within this framework, including the building of uh, the national stadiums and schools, are becoming not only the landmark projects in the country and even in the South Pacific region. So what do you think are some of the major changes brought to the, uh, the well-being of the people as well as the development of the country and the region? The priority of the government is to try to do as much as uh, he can within its means, of, of course, mm -hmm. to provide better service to, to the people. And uh, in uh, Vanuatu, few islands are benefiting. The photo you show me is we, on the island of Malakula. Yes. Uh, we have uh, the similar road on the island of Tana. 
Tana is one of the area that it is uh, attracting tourists because uh, that's where we we have uh, uh, an active volcano associated with road. We will now have uh, more better access to go to the volcanoes. Before it was very hard, but today we can go uh, to the volcano. And uh, I think it, it is shared uh, with uh, all island in the Pacific because we are a small islands and. We have limited resources, but uh, with uh, the cooperation and uh, relationship that we have with uh, China, mm -hmm. we cannot afford or we can be able to have uh, access to this uh, uh, infrastructure that we have not. But it is also resilient because uh, you can resist to the cyclone. And also your government has previously highlighted the challenge of uh, passive data gaps, digital devices, key hurdles in keeping pace with uh, technological advancement. So this time when you were in China, you visited some uh, high-tech companies. So what's your outlook in enhancing cooperation with China in innovation in digital economy? I think it's very important to have uh, this uh, information and uh, data for decision makers. Mm -hmm. We can be the decide, even with uh, uh, minimum uh, resources. And I visit uh, an, uh, an, uh, an academic uh, agriculture academy and mm -hmm. how they use uh, uh, IT, information technology. And it is very helpful, very, very really helpful. Basically because uh, now we have uh, one uh, sub, uh, submarine cable and we are planning to uh, connect one more. And because Vanuatu um, is very vulnerable to disaster, it is important to have uh, this kind of collection to provide more security. We're talking about education. Actually, uh, the teaching and learning of <coughs> Mandarin Chinese has been included in the uh, primary and secondary education system in uh, Vanuatu. And I heard from my colleagues uh, who have been reporting there that uh, increasing number of students are you know, gaining their interest in learning Chinese. So how do you think the exposure to the Chinese language, Chinese culture can help the younger generation in your country to enhance their cross-cultural understanding and global awareness? During my time as a student, we are not yet independent, but because I'm a Francophone, but, uh, I have to learn, it was compulsory to learn uh, English because Vanuatu uh, was a condominium colonized by Great Britain and France. Mm -hmm. But we, uh, we, it was also uh, an obligation to choose one more language, either Spanish, in Japan, Japanese, or uh, German. Mm -hmm. Why? Because at the time, in terms of uh, technology, uh, Japan and uh, Germany were uh, in advance mm -hmm. uh, in the 1970s and 80s. So today it's uh, Chinese. So we're importing a lot also from uh, uh, China. Mm -hmm. If you want to, uh, we're in to have a good relationship with China, we have to learn the Chinese language to better understand Chinese culture. We already decided to uh, introduce uh, Chinese language in few schools in Vanuatu. We have uh, a quite a good number as well of uh, students studying in, uh, in China. In China. Yes. And uh, I think we are not uh, wrong. It's a right decision to come and learn Chinese because uh, tomorrow we'll have to work more with uh, China, definitely. Well, thanks to the uh, favorable climate, uh, Vanuatu has abundant uh, agricultural products such as coffee and uh, coconut. And uh, fortunately, these uh, products are now gaining their access to the Chinese markets through the platforms like CIE, the International Import Expo, etc. So looking ahead, Mr. Prime Minister, what is your outlook in making the agricultural products from Vanuatu more appealing to the Chinese customers? Before talking about market, we need to go back to primary industry to produce more. 
because China is not a small market. It's a big market. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm also inviting investors who want to invest in the product sector, in coffee, cocoa, mm -hmm. so cattle, because we have uh, one of the best beef. Mr. Prime Minister, I heard that sometimes you like to, to walk along the beach. So while wandering the beach side, what are some of the thoughts that you usually ponder? It's more for health than uh, before, because uh, I, I used to work with friends, exchange uh, ideas and uh, views, too many things. Uh, but we exchange out of uh, my political life, and uh, I had to work with uh, some friends. We discuss uh, other things than uh, politics. Mm -hmm. Second office. But also opportunity for some, but uh, cannot uh, afford to find opportunity to come and uh, see me in office. So it's an opportunity to listen to them and by working. Mm -hmm. It's always. Uh, Pleasant to listen to others. So, Prime Minister Saul Wai, it was such a great pleasure talking to you. Thank you for your time and for sharing with your very insightful views. Greatly appreciated. Thank you very much. During the interview, we truly sense Prime Minister Saul Wai's gratitude for China's sincere assistance to Vanuatu over the years, addressing the country's specific needs. We also felt his enthusiasm for expanding cooperation with China, particularly in infrastructure and green development. And we look forward to both countries upgrading the comprehensive strategic partnership and building a China-Vanuatu community with a shared future in the new era. With that, we're going to wrap up this edition of Leaders Talk. I'm Zoe reporting from Beijing. Thank you for watching and see you next time.